Hey guys and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how do you scan artwork if you have a small scanner and oversized artwork. For instance, if you're doing artwork on paper like this, that's potentially 11 by 17, 14 by 17, you know, stuff like this. So I typically like to draw, like if I'm creating a book or something, I like to do my artwork on actual paper, scan that in, and um, get it into the computer so that I can start formatting for, for my book or whatever I'm doing, or prints or things like that. So when you have artwork like this that's oversized, um, a lot of times uh, now they sell scanners that are have an 8.5 by 11 bed. Now obviously this isn't going to fit in something like that. So you're going to have to scan this thing in sections and then piece it together in Photoshop. And that's what this video is gonna be. So I'm gonna show you guys how to scan this in sections on your small scanner, get it into the Photoshop, piece it together very efficiently, and um, have Photoshop do the work for you. All right, so let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so I'm in Photoshop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File, we're going to go to import images from device and it brings this little screen up and as you can see I have an Epson Artisan 725 and the the actual it already did a preview here so what you want to do is after you stick your artwork in you're going to want to hit overview and your scanner is going to work and it's going to do an overview like this of your work make sure you get a good you know, if you need to press down a little bit, because sometimes it gets a little blurry. Make sure your resolution is set to 300. And this is black and white. I always tend to go color, um, just kind of as a default. You're scanning to the desktop. Scan JPEG. That's fine. We're not going to do any color corrections right now. And then you're going to have to go ahead and create a little marquee box around your scan area. Just go maximum width and height on that so that way it's selected like this then you're just gonna go ahead and hit scan and it's gonna scan your document now again you're gonna do this four times this is the first time so you're gonna scan four sections and they have to overlap that's probably the most important thing that I could say about doing this this little technique in Photoshop in the old days, I used to have to piece this sucker together and blend it manually, blend each section manually. But there's a little uh, technique in Photoshop that allows you to do all of the blending together. <clears throat> uh, the Photoshop, the program, does everything for you, uh, which is a really neat feature. So for those of you that are doing this technique, this is really going to help you out. Now, there's other ways to do this. This is my way of doing this stuff. So, um, all right, so now we have this one section scan. I'm going to go ahead and go to my scanner and I'm going to flip the artwork and I'm going to show you how I do that in one second. Hey guys, so, all right, so here's the artwork that we're going to scan. All right, so we're scanning four corners of this thing. So, first, we're going to get our first corner in. Now, as you can see, putting this in, we're actually getting, we're overlapping probably 75% more on each side. And that's what you want. All right, so we, we're gonna scan this, this first uh, section, and then when we're done, we're just gonna take that and shift it over to scan that bottom right or left section, right? We're gonna scan that. Then when we're done with that, we're gonna flip it around and scan another corner, the third corner, we're going to do that, and the last, the fourth corner, and we're going to get that going, all right? Now, once we have all those scanned in, into Photoshop, I'm going to show you next how to, a technique in Photoshop that lets you blend all of these images together automatically, okay? Let's get to it. All right, so now that we have our images scanned, uh, You'll probably have them scanned on your desktop or your downloads folder or whatever. So all those little sections. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something called Automate Photo Merge. All right. So this is under File. Uh, so we're going to go File, 
automate photo merge it's going to bring up photo merge and we're, we're going to want to blend images together now it gives you other options to cylindrical spherical I never use any of those you can collage reposition all that uh, since we have that overlap that I talked about when we scanned uh, it's going to give the uh, algorithm or Photoshop enough enough information to go ahead and blend the images together so just make sure that's clicked go to browse and wherever you've saved these guys, where did I save them? Uh, no, that's not it. Scan, I have so many things scanned here. Uh, all right, there we go. So I think it's 11, 12, 13, and 14, yeah. So make sure you select all four. You're gonna click open, and you're gonna see them all right here in your photo merge palette, and just hit okay, and watch it work. Now Photoshop is doing this automatically. I'm not doing anything. I'm just watching. And it's going to do its little calculation. And boom, there you go. Now, if you go over to your layers palette, you can see that each Photoshop automatically blended each one of these sections. I'm clicking on and off of these of these layers and you can see how that actually blended it's really interesting and it masked off uh, the sections that uh, that don't really matter so what I like to do is I like to just go up to our um, in our layers menu uh, and flatten the whole thing alright and then we're just gonna go rotate 180 and there you have it your image is scanned alright now what I like to do I like to automatically just do a adjustments. Let's do a, well, let's do an auto contrast. And you can see that that's automatically better. All right. We can, we can crop actually to the image. So we can go to our crop tool, zoom in a little bit, and we can just kind of crop in the areas that we that we want, we don't need. Eh. Yeah, we could probably leave that. The bottom portion. All right, so there we go. We just crop that in. Now you can see there there is some, you know, right here where it shifted the paper up a little bit. So it's going to give you a little, a little bit of uneven. But that's easily fixable. So let's go to our, uh, let's do levels. Let's bring up, if we bring up our brightness, just uh, a left slider or the right slider up a little bit, you could see we're, we're just brightening it up just to get rid of, um, just to pop that white a little bit. And what happens is it automatically gets rid of any sort of irregular blending to this. Now you could see where I actually drew some of the pencil in. I actually like that because this is uh, this image here. I did a Cthulhu image for uh, my upcoming book, and this was all done with uh, Pentel brush pen on Br on Strathmore Bristol paper. So uh, I love that paper, and uh, the Pentel brush pens are fantastic. I use them all the time. Um, and that's it, guys. Uh, and then you could just save this out, and you have your scan. Now you could do this repeatedly, obviously, with as many drawings as you want. Um, I wouldn't go. I, I wouldn't scan in like a twenty by thirty. Obviously, you can't get that overlap. So this is good for, you know, eleven by seventeens, fourteen by seventeens, things like that. Uh, I wouldn't go any bigger than than that, a fourteen by seventeen, or even a a, a fifteen by twenty. I'd say probably that's the maximum size that you could go on on piecing artwork together using a small scanner, but it's a great technique. Very simple, very fast, and easy. So anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, if there's a better way, uh, it, you know, obviously if you're photographing um, uh, bigger artwork, you're going to use a camera or things like that. Post it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts um, and how you do your, uh, your scans, your photographs, your techniques. Uh, 
so that we can all learn. Uh, okay, guys, like and share and subscribe to the channel. It really is going to help the channel grow. I really want to build a really great community here. So um, I'll see you guys on the next video.